day number two for our Formula One 2019 mid-season reviews takes us to Carlos Sainz. As I mentioned yesterday, the order is going to be completely random and out of the hat today came Mr. Sainz. Sainz Jr., in actual fact, is the replacement for Fernando Alonso and Stoffel van Dorn. Both were axed from McLaren at the end of the 2018 season. In came rookie Lando Norris, but also came in Carlos Sainz in his fifth season of Formula One this season. Came in to be the team leader, the first time really that Carlos had the chance to do so. He'd played a similar kind of role at Torosso in the past, but this was the first time that Sainz was going to be the daddy figure, the figurehead, the spearhead of the team. And many people were, were questioning, well, Red Bull didn't give him the call up. They decided instead to go with Pierre Gasly, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But many people were questioning whether Sainz would be able to, to fill the giant hole, let's not forget, left by Fernando Alonso. Just a quick heads up from me, all this week, next week, maybe the week after, we're going to be doing all 20 drivers, little bite-sized videos, so don't worry, normal videos will be coming out around the series. However, I just wanted to mention every single day, there's going to be at least one of these videos. So if you enjoy Formula One content and you're trying to find that little bit of something during the summer break, then feel free to subscribe. But Carlos Sainz is where our attention is on today. Wow, what a season this man is having. Don't get me wrong, McLaren this year have made huge strides forward. Last year, at the very end of the season, were fighting with Williams at the very back of the field. I can see why Fernando left. I questioned at the time the team's decision to get rid of Stoffel van Dorn, but I think both Sainz and Norris, the decision to bring both of them, has paid off massively. Going back to the beginning of the season, it wasn't the best start. Lando Norris in particular was doing a great job, but Carlos Sainz, well, qualifying wasn't going as well as Norris, but also his race performances just were not giving him any luck. In the first race of the season in Melbourne, retired, broke down, no points. Norris in the points seemed to be a bit of a star, a bit of a, an ex-Lewis Hamilton if you want to call him that. I don't like to use that term very often, but it really looked like Norris might be able to take the fight to Sainz this season, and there's still plenty of races to go, and he might very well do that. The next race in Bahrain, Sainz then almost made his stamp, stamped his authority on the team, and really tried to say, I'm here, I'm ready to race, and ready to prove myself in Formula 1, and that's exactly what he did, fighting with Max Verstappen, which at the time would have been a net podium finish. There was a bit of contact between Verstappen and Sainz. Sainz felt that Verstappen didn't leave him enough. Well, Verstappen dove up the inside and Sainz squeezed him. And a little bit of a kerfuffle. Sainz felt that he dive-bombed. Anyway, the moral of the story is Sainz, big damage on the car, ended up retiring. China was not a good race for McLaren. Neither driver picking up points. However, ever since China, Sainz has been on fire. Missing out on points just once in Canada. In every single race, he scored points. And that's been eighth or better. A seventh place in Azerbaijan. But not only that, we've got three sixth place finishes in Monaco, France and Silverstone. But in the last two races, fifth place in Germany and Hungary, Germany, we can uh, we can count that one out a little bit. I think that's a bit of an outlier, but in Hungary, this man has no right to be getting sixth place finishes ahead of one of the top six drivers in those top three teams. There's no right for him to be doing that in the McLaren. But to get two fifth place finishes as well, hats off to him. And yesterday, I was, I was going through the comments of our Lewis Hamilton preview, or review, sorry, our mid-season review. And a few people were saying that Sainz, you know, he's lucked into some of these positions. Well, you could say that. But drives, like in Austria, starting from last, driving all the way up to P8, I, I can't really fault that, to be honest with you. I really can't. A guy who came into this season, I think, with a lot of pressure on his shoulders. A team, a historic team like McLaren, replacing not only his hero, but a Formula One legend in Fernando Alonso, a team that have struggled for so many years, to put them comfortably in fourth best in the constructors, 
to just be five points behind Pierre Gasly, I think Red Bull are scratching their heads and <laughs> are really questioning their decision on picking Gasly because Sainz this year for me has been one of the best on the grid. And as you know, we are doing our ratings and Carlos Sainz for me gets a 9 out of 10. Really impressed with Carlos this year. And I know some people say it's hard to judge. He's, a, he's against a rookie. How can you judge that? But even so, the amount of pressure this guy's had and the way he has driven, the overtakes he has made this season, top class, top class. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Am I being too kind to Sainz? Am I being harsh? Is he a perfect 10? I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Later on today, we're doing a transfer talk all about Valtteri Bottas and where he could go if he leaves Mercedes. So keep your eye open for that one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.